Jen Caruso. I'm the SVP here at Julius. Um, we are going to be kicking off shortly. I will be uh, muting myself just for the next minute while we have everybody else join um, and look forward to speaking to you all shortly. All right, I think we're going to get started. So um, a big thank you for making the time to join our webinar today. Uh, I know we are living in crazy times. Um, we, I have to thank my team for getting this webinar together as well. Um, and a huge shout out to all the great work done by our partners. So I will be fully transparent with you and share that a lot of the intel that we'll be sharing today, it has been um, a collaborative process. Um, thank you to WPP, Ogilvy, Gardner, um, uh, even some of our um, competitor partners, Hyper, Tracker, Isaiah, Maverick, et cetera. Um, we want to give you a full 360 view of what's going on in the space, and hopefully you'll be able to appreciate that today. So without further ado, um, we're just going to kick off. Great. So... Uh, no denying there are a lot of ways that people are reacting to the crazy world that we're living in today. Um, and, you know, we want to use this as a reminder to uh, kind of, you know, follow lead from the British, right? Um, keep calm and carry on as much as we can, because um, we don't need to do just panic buying or freeze everything. There should be a happy medium. Looking into uh, what we're being told, there's a lot of talk around social distancing, but you know, we at Julius, you know, we really don't see it that way. We see it more as spatial distancing, right? Keeping uh, safe and six feet apart. Um, but when it comes to social distancing, I mean, we're, we're basically more digitally connected um, than ever before, right? We are seeing a huge surge in FaceTime calls, virtual dinner parties, um, company happy hours over uh, Zoom or FaceTime or Hangouts, et cetera. Um, and what we know about this is that the time that we're spending at home, um, it means that there's a lot more time that we're spending online. Uh, so here's just a stat here that's kind of showing different um, age groups and how media consumption is changing because of the coronavirus and, and how people are spending their time. So um, not too surprising, 29% of people are saying they're checking their social media more frequently. And 66% say social media usage will continue to increase uh, the more that they are stuck at home um, and suffering from cabin fever. Breaking this down more specifically into social media channels, um, what we see is YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, they're really gaining the lion's share of new activity, um, which is no surprise those platforms are pretty dominant. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, we're seeing LinkedIn, um, Twitch, and TikTok in terms of low increase. And that doesn't mean that those platforms are not being used. This is just an uptick in total usage on those platforms. When we look at time spent online outside of just the social media perspective, um, there's also a lot more time for us to be shopping online, right? We're not going out to restaurants. We're not going to the movie theaters. Um, we want to keep ourselves entertained. Some of us are living at home uh, with kids that we used to be in school, uh, parents, boyfriends, girlfriends, partners, etc. cetera. Um, so entertainment is definitely on top of people's minds, right? How are we going to get through these next few weeks, uh, months, et cetera? And what we're seeing is um, consumer behavior is definitely shifting to online shopping, but where that lies, I mean, there's the obvious, right? There's food deliveries. Um, there is, uh, you know, groceries that people are ordering online instead of going to the stores. 
but we're also seeing um, spikes in people that are doing a lot more e-gaming, um, ordering books, ordering fitness equipment, you know, they can't get to the gym, um, and also arts and crafts, you know, people trying, parents trying to keep their kids busy or take up a new hobby, uh, something that they haven't done before. So just to quickly align on today's agenda, um, what we're looking to do is understand what we've learned from our past, right? We've, we've all, uh, we lived through SARS in 2003, there was the Great Recession in 2007, 2009. Um, so we wanna look at that a bit and understand what the, the key takeaways were that we can apply to today's uh, current scenario. Um, then we wanna look at how we can adapt uh, to the today, the here and now, right? So what does that mean for influencer marketing? And who are some of the, um, the brands, the influencers that are just doing it right? They're really grasping this opportunity um, to connect more authentically with their consumers. So taking a look back, um, what we know, and again, this thanks to um, WPP just put out a white paper on how to respond to coronavirus. What we know is that there's three different phases of change, um, and that's acute outbreak, which is exactly where we are now, right? It's We know the spikes are, um, the numbers keep uh, adding up, especially here in the US. Um, aside from China that's slightly plateauing, they're really in recovery stage. We're really not, at, no one's at the new normal just yet. Um, so looking back uh, in 2003 with SARS, we can see that the outbreak in 2003 um, really was the first time that there was a lot of in-home quarantining, right? So um, it caused, it was a catalyst for widespread behavioral change, and especially as we're seeing now, adoption of new technology. So to compare it to today's um, day and age, and again, thinking back to those three different phases, um, China, in terms of markets, they, they got hit with this first, and that means they're a couple of weeks uh, ahead of us in terms of what that curve means. So while um, they've reached their peak and they're now trying to stabilize those numbers, already just analyzing consumer behaviors in China really speak to what we saw um, back in 2003 with SARS, and it's even more prevalent now because we live in a far more digitally connected world where e-commerce is a lot easier. Um, and you can see how this shifts by category, a lot more online consultations, education courses, um, online entertainment, banking, ordering indoor fitness equipment, et cetera. Um, it's really how we're learning to adapt to this uh, new reality that we're all living under. Fast forward a little bit further. So let's think about, um, beyond just recovery, um, but the new normal. So 2007 is around mid-2007 to mid-2009, um, you know, we hit the Great Recession uh, and times were tough. And this table here, this demonstrates how companies um, during that time, uh, so this is all earning before taxes, et cetera, um, how everything uh, really plateaued for the companies that didn't adapt and the companies that were able to pivot themselves um, during that time and not make drastic cut costs, um, cost cutting um, moves, how they were able to really thrive later. And this chart I think is really significant for us to think about now is, you know, we obviously wanna be sensitive to the fact that people are being furloughed, they're being laid off. Um, and the point isn't sell now, sell harder. The point is we're all people and it's our job, job as marketers to think about how we connect with our consumers because whether you're selling to them today or selling to them um, in the future when things are a little bit different, you're building a brand. And the point right now is how can you um, pivot your positioning so that you can speak to your consumers from an authentic place, a supportive place, maybe with a, that's through humor or that's through entertainment, um, but just something to acknowledge that, you know, you're not going to only be talking to them when dollars open up again later um, in Q, Q2, Q3, whenever that might be. Um, and a great quote that we saw from the Gardner COVID um, webinar is uh, Kate Mule. So she's a VP analyst um, of marketing strategy and leadership. Uh, and the quote is, we're seeing consumers judging the way that brands respond and communicate and using that as a basis for whether or not they want to continue brand relationships in the long term. 
So again, um, saying nothing at all is almost worse than saying something. Um, and we're seeing brands are really under scrutiny if they're either tone deaf or not really acknowledging the current situation they're in. So this is just um, some highlights of uh, tweets out of brands uh, that are not, um, that have had some faux pas there. So, okay, what do we do? Point is not to invoke panic uh, in our marketers, right? What is the next step? So thinking about um, this in three different tiers, we've got, you know, acknowledge the situation, express your sympathy and provide support. And the ways that we can do this is expressing solidarity, um, donating money, supplies, um, services to relief efforts, and prioritizing long-term brand building over short-term capitalization. Uh, and we at Julius, I mean, we know what it's like to be a small company. Um, we're, we're not coming from a place we understand, you know, not everybody's P&G with budgets to donate uh, enormous amounts of money, but we all can absolutely um, serve value by helping educate uh, our consumers at these times and how to practice best safety and how to uh, even help raise money and awareness uh, for causes that we believe in. Second thing is listen for brand sentiment and opportunities. And for our Julius customers that are on this webinar today, uh, just a reminder that with your subscription, we do have a social listening tool so you can identify influencers that are talking about certain hashtags or phrases, um, brand mentions, et cetera. So use this time to really listen to what is going on in the marketplace and um, act on that. Um, establish elevated customer service protocols. I think we've seen companies do a great job of that. Um, you know, Burger King is now delivering. They have no, um, there's no contact. They leave food at the door. We're definitely seeing people pivot their strategy. And um, further to that is reallocating spend behind most topically relevant segments and SKUs. So, not of all, all of us are able to do this, but if you can, I mean, edible arrangements, for example, they just um, went from fruit arrangements to whole fruit produce to support um, health uh, and safety standards. Uh, Louis Vuitton um, just went from luxury goods and now they're producing hand sanitizer. We're even seeing um, Los Angeles Apparel, they went from making clothing to now they're actually making masks. So again, there's a lot of different ways that you can refocus if you're a, a shoe brand and you know people aren't going on marathon runs um, if you're selling home apparel or luxury um, lounging apparel not a bad time to think about pivoting that and again being sensitive to your audience and their circumstances um, and last bit is you know providing reassurance and setting clear expectations so communicating realistic product delivery uh, you know, there are going to be delays, even uh, if you go on Amazon these days, if you're not ordering a, um, a must have or must need item, you're going to see, you know, weeks out and being able to get ahead of that and communicate that with your customers, obviously, is all about um, expectation management and uh, they're looking for you for that. Um, in addition to that is just lead with pre um, preparedness and establishing and communicating those hygiene standards. What is your company doing to, if you are in, a, um, in an industry that is affected, especially by hygiene standards, what are you guys doing to adapt that and protect your employees as well? It's not always just about the um, consumers, but what are you as a company doing uh, to look after each other? All right, so all of that said, um, we're on the line today because we specifically work in the influencer marketing uh, industry. So let's take a look at how this all boils down to working with influencers. So here we've got three different examples of how brands are leveraging influencers um, and thinking outside the box of them in terms of how they're uh, messaging during these times. So first and foremost, you probably have seen this, um, a lot of brands that are doing this right now, but educating on safety measures and supporting um, pro bono cause marketing. The reality is not every um, not everyone is tuning into the news every single day, and some you know some people do not want to hear it anymore. So to make sure that we're just spreading um, awareness of what we should be doing right now to support uh, public safety, using influencers that have an engaged audience and can pivot their message and, and look after their audience, not a bad idea at these times. It doesn't always have to be about exactly your product or service. It's all about just support. 
Um, second thing is, you know, I, Puma did a great job. They pulled together um, posts where they're entertaining their consumers. So you can have your influencers wearing your clothes or whatever the case is, highlighting your products, but you don't have to be doing a hard um, call to action message. The people are bored. They're looking for entertainment. They're looking for enlightenment. If you can um, work with your influencers who are, um, that is their craft, right? Knowing how to entertain, connect, um, and, and really engage with consumers. Now is the time to collaborate with them on ideas to keep them entertained. And last but not least, there is no shame in promoting a product sensitively if it is a um, product or a service that supports consumers' needs at this time. Um, you know, this is an influencer promoting Audible. And yeah, we have a lot more time. So if you happen to have a product or a service that genuinely comes in handy, don't be, uh, now's not the time to not support it. I mean, the economy, any type of growth that we can have or um, help the economy out, don't, don't be shy about it. Obviously, don't be tone deaf, but um, there's no shame in, in supporting those products and services. Um, and speaking of tone deaf, another um, call out. So next, we're going to talk about checklists. And this is um, from Ogilvy's uh, latest white paper is, you know, don't be thirsty. So check your tone. You know, is it appropriate? Do you sound opportunistic? Are you being sympathetic to who you're trying to reach, right? Um, second is, are you, uh, are you contributing to any type of fear mongering, right? The goal here is to help our consumers feel more comfortable, um, calmer, like every, we have a, a grasp on what um, on best practices and how we're handling this to make the most of the current situation. So um, are, is the content that you're contributing going to contribute to a sense of panic? Um, next is, you know, are you uh, being offensive because you're assuming too much about your audience, right? Are you uh, making assumptions about their current lifestyles or their situations or access to resources, right? We just saw um, Vanessa Hudgens did a a post and got a lot of heat for it because you know she she's living a very comfortable lifestyle right now and it doesn't really connect with um, the people that she was posting to so being sensitive to things like that um, super important these times obviously being sensitive to safety guidelines you know don't have, work with the uh, influencer and be careful with the brief uh, are they touching their faces are they in large group gatherings are they still going outside and taking videos when they're not six feet apart from others you know being um, cognitive of, of those social standards right now is super important. Um, knowing what the impact on others' reputations will look like, right? This is, there's a lot of opinions right now. This has become almost a politicized issue. Um, so thinking about that when you're doing your positioning, um, should you be pausing um, or continuing marketing efforts? Um, and should you be collaborating more with the influencers or other agencies before you move forward with any type of program? Um, and last but not least, uh, you know, does this serve a purpose? Is the content that you're putting out, um, is it going to be informative? Is it going to be educational? Is it going to be um, funny, right? What exactly is the goal of the content? If you're putting content out just for the sake of it, um, you know, pause on that and, and really rethink that. When looking at where we're at today, we're doing a lot more brand marketing than we are um, bottom of the funnel, right? So the messaging that you have, this is the time to get creative. If you traditionally are doing Instagram advertising, that's a strong call to action, look into different platforms to connect with consumers are different um, in different ways and look for uh, the opportunity to sync with audiences that you haven't been in front of before. So let people know what you value, um, how you can still support them, entertain and delight, and really take this opportunity to be a thought leader, right? Just because you can't, uh, if your brick and mortar store is closed, doesn't mean you have an opportunity to really get in front of your customers um, and align with them on how to make the most of their lifestyle um, and, and really speak to your brand values there. Now, beyond this is obviously when you think about, all right, playing with different platforms, different messaging techniques, it's also, you know, looking into different compensation models. So, 
uh, Maverick did a great job of putting together uh, stats on how the cost per post by social media platform has risen over the last five years. Um, and this was done, I'll caveat, this was done right um, before coronavirus hit, so this is up to 2019. With that said, um, we're expecting to see a 15 to 20% decrease in cost per post because of the current um, economic situation right now. This is not an opportunity to get bullish with influencers who are also going through tough times financially. Um, obviously you wanna be sensitive to that. They're people too. Um, some of them that are doing this as full-time um, income, but um, you know, know, know where we're at in the economy, just information to kind of guide that. Leveraging micro-influencers, uh, typically you can get a lot more, we're, we're trying to do a lot more with a lot less right now. And uh, micro-influencers are always a, a nice route. They have high engagement rate. They, did a, they do a great job of reaching um, different audiences. Um, you can get a mi more diverse audience if you can work with multiple different micro-influencers instead of focusing on one influencer that is uh, more focused on, on reaching a certain uh, demographic. Um, and use this opportunity to collaborate. Again, influencers, they're creative-minded people, right? They're almost like content workshops. So collaborate with them on ways that you can reach audiences differently. So what is hot right now and what is trending? We are obviously seeing a lot of user-generated content. Uh, so it's everyone is you know, binge watching on Netflix, talking about um, the latest shows. People wanna share their opinions. It's definitely a cabin fever-itis and people wanna share what's going on with them and stay connected. So use this opportunity to connect as well. Um, we're also seeing that TikTok is hot. So um, just over the last 90 days, it's been mentioned 36 million times. So take advantage. Again, if you haven't even thought about TikTok, think about all the ways that you can create challenges, et cetera, and, and have fun with your consumers. And last but not least, Facebook and Instagram Live, um, they are indicating they receive three times uh, higher engagements um, than pre-recorded videos. So go ahead and leverage that to, to engage with your audiences and give them some really good content to chew on. So next we wanna focus on brands and influencers that are doing it right. So shout out um, to uh, who wore what, um, who is an influencer, she's a beauty influencer and she just put out this PSA um, on March 20th. This PSA went out to influencers within her network. It was to inform on ways to um, have them help their local communities. She compiled a list of organizations to support, um, and she hosted an Instagram Live with a doctor to answer the audience's question around the coronavirus. By doing so, she was able to raise and donate $20,000 to the Food Bank of New York City and River Fund. I mean, pretty tremendous when you think about what one person can do, never mind what one company can do if we really put our minds to something good. Um, looking uh, beyond just digital influencers, but celebrity influencers, Amy Adams and Jennifer Garner recently got together too um, for Save the Children and No Kid Hun Hungry. Um, so what they've been doing is pretty phenomenal. They've been collaborating with different celebrities to raise awareness, uh, essentially get um, more educational resources to kids and parents that are stuck at home. Um, and by doing so, they were able to get Save the Stories 145,000 um, followers in just two weeks. Um, so again, using your influence for good, um, never better time than the present. And switching over to brands. So we know, you know, we work with a lot of um, event companies ourselves, and it is tough. It is tough to um, move forward in a time where people can't gather. Um, so a lot of what we're seeing are the brands that are able to adapt event companies, um, festivals, et cetera. They're shifting to um, at-home digital concerts, which is exactly what iHeartRadio did here. So they collaborated with celebrities to bring music um, to the homes of Americans, and they had this big um, living room concert. And it was, I mean, they were able to raise over a million dollars. Um, they encouraged donations. And really, um, this is exactly the type of um, food for thought. Obviously, this is on a grander scale, but um, a great template for what you can also think about doing on a smaller uh, scale if you know you don't have budget to hire Alicia Keys. Um, Headspace doing great in the world. So they just created a free series of guided meditations. Um, and what they're doing is they're offering this as a free, um, free for all healthcare providers uh, 
offering um, throughout 2020. If you think about the doctors, um, nurses, even the um, uh, you know people at the grocery stores, there's a lot of soldiers out there right now that are really putting their neck out on the line. So anything that you can do to support them and make their life a little bit easier, um, a, a, those things go a long way. Um, and Headspace is using influencers to help spread that message um, and raise awareness so that those healthcare providers can take full advantage of that. And uh, last but not least in terms of brands, um, doing real well um, and doing good is uh, Puma, right? So again, going back to people probably aren't buying um, a lot of new sneakers right now when they're stuck at home, even if they can, um, if they're doing their at home yoga workouts. Um, and what they're doing is they are leveraging fitness influencers to do at home workouts. And they're doing a Puma outfit giveaway and offering a personal online training session with this um, fitness influencer, again, to engage their audiences, thinking outside of the box. And all of this um, leads us to moral of the story, right? So people are buying brands, not products or services. If you think about what you currently sell or what you currently offer, I can guarantee you've got a set of competitors. So what makes you stand out is the brand that you've built, the lifestyle that you subscribe to, the values that you hold. So take advantage of this opportunity to tell your consumers who you are and how you have their back at times like these. So with that all said, um, we're now opening up to Q&A. And I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna stop or start with some of the questions that came in here. Okay, um, so well, we've quite a few. Um, all right, I work in the event space. Um, how how do we pivot? So I guess yeah, speaking to that um, the iHeart um, Radio Music Awards they did at home. Um, you know, doing things digitally online. Um, getting I I don't know if you've seen this, but um, there was just a Coachella instead of a Coachella hashtag that went off um, and they launched a dance off on TikTok um, and Instagram um, of art, different artists, um, lip sync battles, et cetera. So, um, you know, following suit there, some great ways that you can kind of um, think outside the box and make this more of a digitally connected opportunity. All right, I work in CPG. Uh, our client site is not set up for, that makes sense, right? You're selling face wash, people aren't going directly to the the brand site to order it. So how do you adapt? Um, well, a couple ways, right? So thinking about um, people have more time on their hands now than ever, right? So I know I've been personally like cooking harder recipes than I've ever done and, and undertaking um, harder projects in the kitchen. But yeah, same thing goes. This is a time again to entertain and keep your consumers busy. So why not hire a beauty blogger um, and do YouTube tutorials and create challenges for different um, looks or masks or whatever the um, whatever your specific um, product is? Work around that, come up with challenges, or, or give them different ideas of how they can maintain a healthy beauty um, regimen if that's really in line with your with your messaging and your aesthetic. Um, what if shipments are delayed? Okay, so I take it this is branded. Okay, so yeah, that is definitely happening. We spoke about this a little bit earlier. Um, the shipments, <laughs> it's, I mean, Amazon, Walmart, they are gonna be delayed. Um, but one of the best things you can do, and you know, this is outside of just influencer marketing, is thinking about um, you know, working together to get a point of sales page on your website, um, seeing if there's anything that you can do to kind of help facilitate another um, delivery method. Great. Uh, we've got a few more questions. We will be sharing, yes. So um, this presentation that we have uh, today, we will be sharing this. So we have everyone that registered today, you'll be receiving a follow-up email from our marketing team with a link to download the deck. Um, and we'll also be having a one-sheeter. And any questions that we don't get to today, please email us at marketing at juliusworks.com. We will be responding to your emails um, personally and making sure that you have uh, support there. Okay, I work at a global nonprofit. Sorry, I'm whispering. So I work at a global nonprofit responding to the coronavirus. Suggestions for getting attention of new influencers to work with us. Yes, so um, 
I apologize that I don't know if you're one of the Julia subscribers or not. If you are a Julia subscriber, we do have, we actually just um, created a new um, tag for coronavirus. So it will allow you to filter and identify influencers who are already outspoken um, to support the coronavirus as a cause. So that's absolutely one thing that you can do. Um, and the second thing you can do obviously with um, social listening is finding influencers that are already speaking um, to uh, initiatives that you support or projects that you support um, and, and leveraging that to, um, to connect with people that would probably have a higher propensity or interest in working with you. Here we go. Wow, a lot of good questions here, guys. Um, how do you think this will impact future influencer trends? You know what? I'm going to take that question back to the team before I spout out something that is ill-informed. I mean, I, I know consumer behavior. This is going to, it's going to be a pre-coronavirus and post-coronavirus world in terms of consumer behavior. I mean, I've, I've been reading a lot of articles, you know, Forbes has been publishing um, articles by the minute in terms of how consumer behavior is changing. And I think we've just got to, um, kind of wait and see exactly um, what consumer behavior does and how we and how influencer uh, trends mimic that. Um, but yeah, I owe you a better explanation explanation that so I'll work with the team to to address that and flesh that out more uh, more properly. Our brands our brands influencers still following FTC guidelines. It could be off putting if hashtag ad is at the front of a post copy. So curious what you are all seeing. Um, to our knowledge, we are seeing that um, there, there has, if anything, it's actually a little bit easier. Um, it's actually a little bit easier for influencers to follow those guidelines. Now, um, you know, thinking outside of day-to-day, uh, -day, a lot of the issues that we've seen with influencers, obviously, they're getting gifted and not mentioning it. I think because there's a lot more pause marketing going on and the um, the messaging is being pivoted, I think there's a lot more goodwill going back and forth between the influencers and the brands. Um, but uh, we will look in, let, let's get some stats behind that um, and we'll get back to you on that. And yes, uh, we will be sending this PowerPoint out to anyone registered um, on the webinar, just as, uh, again, as a reminder, glad you guys want that. And we'll also have a one page or two, so it's more digestible. Um, do, do, do. All right, looking, um, looking at uh, questions, we have a lot of other questions that are similar to what we've addressed. So what we'll be doing um, from this point, again, email us your questions. We'll compile um, Q&A as well. So instead of just um, not just answering your questions individually, we'll also be compiling this so you can see other questions that came in from this webinar and have a little bit more of a uh, benchmark to base your own decisions moving forward. Um, that all said, thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate your time. Um, please stay safe, stay well, and uh, stay sane. <laughs> Keep your sense of humors and um, you know, we look forward to hearing from you further.